for those who are watching. Yeah, sure. This is really cool. I, I'm really enjoying uh, watching this. I come from a React background and have been getting a little more into like static mm-hmm. site generation, and Astro has been a lot of fun to to play with. So, yeah, like you're saying, Richard, it's like it's um when you're working with Astro and UI frameworks, right? The you have to call you break it out a wee bit differently because you're thinking it's like great this is not a single page application anymore so what i want to see do a summary of what we've done so far and Sorry. then notice how we still have one little bit of hard-coded text on the screen there that we should yes. totally yeah we should totally be able to take care of that let's do the yep. summary first mm-hmm. so people who are here now can see what we did and then all together we'll fix that last bit on the screen and uh, and then I think you can you can have your day back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when we started, none of this top of the page worked. The green no. stuff at the bottom worked. That's what we did yeah. last week. Right. What we had last week was pretty much all the static content at the top done. Right. So in fact, let me show you last week's stuff here. Right. This is where we were at. We had a default location, which really didn't do anything. Right. I mean, we just kind of yeah. We just set the form up, yeah. And if you noticed when we hit the default location, it just caused a natural page refresh. It sent it up here as a freaking URL request, you know. So it was like there was a there was a behavior, you know, that uh, prevent default just needs to be happening on that, right? We just basically were working on this, and right. I'm um, sorry. So we got to here. Now we were just basically doing this second part here right where we just entered in the country code and now we're just you know starting to go through the process of picking our subregions Aberdeen eh? and then for those who like a bit of class let's go to Edinburgh right um and see what the birds are like oh. over there right <laughs> and so um so now you know it's like and this is what we were doing we're just basically setting building up the the default location here right so as we were going around this just basically builds up so this is now northern ireland and then we go down to london derry right and um oh that's gonna annoy her so much <laughs> um so yeah so we go to london derry and um yeah and then you know we could just change this over so you know we're just changing that over there right and that's where yeah. what we were basically concentrating on today and then if you just scroll down a bit till you see yellow mm-hmm. and then that default location is hooked up to the rest of the app so this is this is the working react app uh and that yeah that default location is is hooked up so in our current state when we started today that button is still there but default location was hard coded because we hadn't done anything with setting a default location to be used throughout the page. That's correct. That's spot on. And so that's um, and that's as far as we've managed to get today, right? So just to do a summary of where we are at today. Let's um we've managed to be able to set the default location, right? So let's just set the default location to um Let's just call it Glasgow, right? No, it needs to be a code, though, right? Ah, yes, that's right. It needs to be a yeah. code, right? So we right? just set, set a DB, default right? location code, yeah. And then what we've got, right, is um, that's they're set in the on the page in the memory, right? So if we go to default location down here, it tells us GB, and now it's also pulled on the f- <laughs> right. So we go to GB, set default location, right? That's what's set on the page. We hit set default location down here. It's populated the title saying the bird default location is Great Britain and has pulled up all the birds that is normally seen within these British Isles here, right? Um, that is, you know, part one, pretty solid, right? Part two was where we were starting to build up the country codes, okay? And from here, like we're doing, is by setting the default location we, we want to find the country code itself right so we go use gb for the country code and this is as far as we've got now it doesn't feel like much but there was a bit of process and deduction of how we're going to best approach this and i hope it makes for interesting viewing <laughs> these guys tell me so yeah so from here we're just basically now at the first level of where is it gone here we are at the equivalent here next and one of the reasons 
that it took us so long is we were discussing some strategy because unlike in React, where it's very easy to say, oh yeah, return list items where each of these buttons now calls a new API with a new country code variable attached to it. Um, when we're working, you know, Just basically in HTML, has changed, sorry. <laughs> we, we don't have quite the same reactivity available to us. So a lot of it was, was spent sort of architecting, okay, how are we going to get data that is then going to be quickly reused again? That yeah. was our issue. <laughs> we spent a bit of time on that. Yeah. And to be honest, right, for something that is only that deep, Man, we spent a fair bit of time on it, <laughs> but you know, it's like we didn't have to break the mold. We didn't have to do anything spectacular. We weren't stuck, you know, as in terms of like what can X element do? Have we reached a limit, a glass ceiling? No, we just need to, you know, think differently. Yes, and, that's exactly it. Yeah, and that is probably the the main you know thing to take away from this is that X element does require you to think, you know, break out of the, the framework model and just try and come back to the land of vanilla JavaScript, you know, it's like, this is where you will go to get your mint chocolate chip ice cream. And this is where you go to go to have vanilla. And because everything is as close as you can get, you could also do this in TypeScript, can I just say, right, for those TypeScript aficionado, aficionados amongst us, this can be done in TypeScript, you can send TypeScript down the line. And, um, it does, you know, it would, it would, Excel and we will deal with it and spit it out properly for you. And if you want to just notice, you know, it's like we've got full party tricks for Excel element. There is nothing polluting the DOM. I mean, the actual document object model is quite nice. Okay, so let's get that, mm -hmm. um, let's get that text on the screen up updating. Right. Yeah. So right now we're only able to attribute the first two codes right so we could just basically do this like this right yeah so i'm just going to turn this into an x element right and a very easy way to turn things into x element is just to come up to where we've declared it originally using camel case clear the element that we're wanting to use the tag of the element in capitals and just literally go down here and just capitalize it that's turned this from a simple standard html element into an x element and then all we're going to do is going to go. So, um, da, 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 da. all right. So we're just grabbing the span. Span dot text content equals the code for yeah it's store dot country dot code this right yes right then we go there currently gb right so what we do here is that we remove this and then click to set a default location and then we just remove this currently and we could add this currently in here right so we go da, 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 drop, drop this around the curlies put it in there and there oh, fine. like that right and then we go From here, we we'll go there, and it says currently set to GB. Yep. Right, and then we do AU. Currently set to AU. But yeah. That so is it. let's mm -hmm. to make me feel better about what we did today, because we really did do more than that little block. Oh, yes. um, check the, yeah, check the code for form. Okay. The X form, because that we built today too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's also short, but we did build that today as well. Exactly. And the thing is, right, it's like you you notice this with Astro, right? And X element when you couple the two together, is that your 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 form your components do own they tend to only encapsulate what they need. You know what I mean? So you will get really nice looking components. 
like really so this cool. looks really this looks really a lot like html but you mm -hmm. can see with our importing x element there we just you know then capitalized our all our elements and then they mm -hmm. got extra capabilities like exactly. i'm loving that that at submit prevent on my form that replaces the uh, event prevent default yep right. yeah so it's so, just and it's so it's, yeah and then there's so many you know um added sugars and added methods to these that just there to help your development experience you know um we look when when we created x element we looked at different places that and there's a lot of places in javascript where the developer is going to need or want to you know abstract away a lot of the boilerplate and as, as you can see there's a lot of boilerplate being extrapolated away for you all right and that's what x element's job is is to take away the heavy stuff so you can get to do the fun stuff and to be fair, I think a lot of our work today, too, was you trying to figure out my React code so we could figure out just what we needed. <laughs> was, I think it was more to do with the conceptualization of it, you know, as well, um, especially when it came to the reactivity side of things. Um, but that was what the whole observe, um, sorry. So, so yeah, this is um, the X regions, right, where we are basically populating the country codes, right? Another thing that we're doing, right? Um, I click a fetch handler within a click um an on click event listener you know messing with data stores you know this stores permeates the atmosphere kind of thing and stuff like that you know there's there's a lot to it and it sits nicely within your entire astral component so you know in terms of like co cohabitation it does it very very nicely thank you very much for your patience your time and it's been greatly appreciated it's been a lot of fun, Sarah. Thank you very much for your time and your effort and your work. It's always appreciated, buddy. It really is.